A peaceful seer arrested, a lawyer killed and a population outraged. After arresting their guru, the Bangladesh government is now working to ban the International Society for Krishna Consciousness or ISKCON. Bangladeshi lawyer Muniru Zaman has sought an order on banning ISKCON and its operations and impose emergency in Chattogram and Rangpur. These are places where violent incidents against Hindu minorities have taken place. A government representative also informed the court that the UNIS administration is working on banning ISKCON for being a religious fundamentalist group. A Krishna Bhakti movement by and of devotees of Lord Krishna since 1966, ISKCON has been known for its peaceful and celebratory ways of devotion. What was started by Swami Srila Prabhupada now has a worldwide presence with lakhs of followers in the Americas, Europe and Asia. In what seems to be a bizarre indication towards India and other countries, Bangladesh's home advisor, retired Lieutenant General Jahagir Alam Chaudhary said the unrest following the arrest of Sri Chinmoy might have been instigated from abroad. Attorney General of Bangladesh, Muhammad Asadu Zaman, told the country's High Court that someone is trying to destabilize their country, adding that the UNUS administration is dealing with the situation by building national unity. Even as this mental and physical harassment of Hindu minorities continues in Bangladesh, voices across the world have been urging US President-elect Donald Trump and Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi to help the community. First of all, on Global Mirror, I am joined by somebody who is the voice of ISKCON, Sri Yudhishthar Govinda Das, National Spokesperson of ISKCON and Country Director Communications for ISKCON India. Shri Govindas, uh, good evening, Namaskar. Thank you very much for speaking with us at Global Mirror. My first question to you, what are your thoughts on the fact that the Bangladeshi administration is working towards banning ISKCON in their country? Um, I saw some statements coming out uh, in the morning from the courtrooms, but what uh, ultimately the government will do is something we have to wait and watch. But uh, it's important to underscore the point that ISKCON comes from the lineage of uh, the Gaudiya Vaishnava tradition within the broad Hindu spectrum. And the Gaudiya Vaishnava tradition originates in Bengal, where Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu 500 years ago started the Bhakti movement. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's own parents came from Bangladesh, modern-day Bangladesh. So the Gaudiya Vaishnavas are spread across West Bengal and Bangladesh in lakhs and lakhs. So our heritage, our traditions all go down back to the same land. And all our devotees in Bangladesh have been there for generations. And ISKCON for the last 50 years has been not just working on the cultural and the spiritual aspect, but has been tremendous contributing to the social and the philanthropic aspect of Bangladesh society. We run yes. orphanages, we run old age homes, we run uh, schools, free medical camps, and in our times of disasters like the floods, uh, most of the times, I could say, it's our devotees who are the first responders risking their own lives going out on the uh, flooded waters and feeding people, irrespective of any caste, any gender, any uh, religious identity. So such an organization, such a philosophy, which believes in seva before self, if you think otherwise, then I don't know what else to say. You know, I also want to understand from you what you think about the kind of attacks that the Hindu minority community has been witnessing in Bangladesh, not just yesterday and today, but since this regime change happened, since the past few months, the kind of atrocities that are being carried out against the minorities in that country. Yeah, what's uh, been going on is a very unfortunate scene that's unfolding in front of us, but this is something that has been historically happening. If you look at the population of the Hindus during the time of independence, it was somewhere close to 30%, which has now come down to 8%. And even prior to this, if you see during the Noakali incidents also, our temples were attacked. And uh, very sadly to say that uh, two of our devotees were also killed in the whole Noakali incident. And in the past few months, similar things have been repeating. So what we have been asking as a collective voice of the Hindu society, uh, including ISKCON, has been that the safety of the minorities should be protected, as is for every other citizen of a country. 
Um, those who are guilty of violence, they should be punished, have uh, taken to trial and then punished. And many of the instances we have seen that they have been let off. So that's one thing that has kind of built a sense of impunity. So that should be addressed. And third, uh, necessity for a peaceful coexistence needs to be pushed at all institutional and governmental levels and bringing together all the stakeholders, which also means the minorities and addressing the concerns. So that's what uh, I would say. Yudhishthir Dasji, can I also understand from you then, like you mentioned that, uh, you know, ISKCON is a group that has been involved in serving people irrespective of their caste, religion, creed, anything. Uh, why do you think then that it is being targeted in Bangladesh? Why do you think that ISKCON, uh, ISKCON's religious structures, the temples, uh, the people related to ISKCON, why are they being targeted in Bangladesh? Uh, well, I would say it's not only ISKCON. There have been other attacks also, like we have seen in the past. So, but oh. ISKCON naturally oh. being uh, the, perhaps the largest Hindu society or Hindu group in the country, uh, it's becoming an easy target, you could say. So we have seen in the recent past also some of the more radical elements coming out on the streets, protesting and even uh, threatening to behead and kill ISKCON members. So that has been a major factor of concern for uh, the ISKCON members across the world. And through our channels, we have uh, brought it up with the authorities in Bangladesh and sought that they intervene and make sure that these threats don't come to reality. You know, what do you, what do you make of the statement that was given out in the Bangladesh High Court today? People like you and the entire ISKCON group was called a religious fundamentalist group. Um, again, I would go back to my points I made earlier that how, how would it be fundamentalism if all our services are open to anyone and everyone and that our medical camps don't discriminate between you, whether you are one religion or the other. So fundamentalism generally is a very remarkable factor for such groups where they only say only this and no one else. But globally, ISKCON, as you have seen across the world, has always been very open and uh, very forthcoming for a service. Now, why they are making these statements, that we will have to wait and watch what is the reasoning. But so far, we have not received any such official communication. So what's going to be your next course of action, um, you know, as far as uh, everything that ISKCON is witnessing in Bangladesh is concerned? We are working with, like I mentioned, with uh, the stakeholders there in Bangladesh, the uh, authorities, whoever they are, the government, and also the minority community to, one, first of all, ensure that we all work together to build a cohesive and a peaceful Bangladesh, and two, we restore peace, not just for the ISKCON members, for the whole society as such, and three, we are working with the government uh, agencies to ensure uh, that they know what ISKCON stands for and also then they can understand and appreciate the value that it brings to the cultural diversity of the country. Yudhishthir Dasji, um, has there been any direct communication between ISKCON and the UNIS administration? They've been saying that, uh, you know, the law will take its own course as far as the arrest of Sri Chinmoy is concerned. Uh, but, but what is the kind of communication uh, that has been happening between the Bangladeshi administration and ISKCON? Like I said, yes, we have been in touch with the government at uh, different levels and we have been communicating with them. My last question to you, Yudhishthir Dasji, uh, you know, ISKCON, we know, um, is spread worldwide. It has lakhs of devotees worldwide who follow the principles and values and celebrate the values of Lord Krishna. Um, and in the past as well, we have seen voices of concern emerging from around the world when it came to attacks on the Hindu minorities in Bangladesh. This time around, are you hearing from people across the world? 
Um, naturally, like, you know, any family member or any concerned citizen, all of us share some common concerns for well-being of every other fellow citizen. So naturally, these are some things that get voiced around the world. And we have been hearing that from different quarters of the world. And uh, all of uh, them have been sharing their good wishes, their prayers and the sympathies for the well-being of the minorities and Hindu community in Bangladesh. And we are very much grateful and appreciative for that. All right, uh, Yudhishthir Govinda Das Ji, thank you very much for speaking with us on Global Mirror and giving us an insight into what's happening between ISKCON and the UNIS administration and what you think of the entire situation. Thank you very much. Namaskar. Uh, well, let me also introduce my guests, welcome them uh, on the show. Professor Chandan Kumar Sarkar, he's a human rights activist in Bangladesh. He's joining us on Global Mirror. Ray Locker, journalist and author in United States, is also joining us. Good evening. Namaskar to both of you. Uh, Professor Sarkar, let me begin with you. Um, you know, what do you make of the kind of situation that we're seeing in Bangladesh? You just heard um, a voice from ISKCON saying that these attacks are concerning, there is worldwide support, yet the UNIS administration uh, plans to label and ban uh, an organization as peaceful as ISKCON as a religious fundamentalist group. Yes, uh, like that is their planning and then pressure is going on. Today is his old days in the different areas in Bangladesh protesters going on that is the trying to ban and put pressure. The government must have to ban the ISKCON. And they tracked on us, that is, ISKCON is a terrorist organization. So although it's absolutely wrong, they always, like, any 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 kind of natural disasters and then health-based activities they are doing for the long period of time. But if our, that is, students group, those who are coming to the power, like uh, either last uh, only for two days, they now this world fooling is a, all over the, across the country, and they are putting pressure to the government. And our attorney general asking that is tomorrow on the Thursday, they have to decide it what actually government should ban or not. That is, they are asking for them. Okay, okay, Ray Locker. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there are increasing voices who are blaming the United States for this uh, kind of chaos and bloodshed that we are seeing in, um, in Bangladesh, the kind of atrocities that one is witnessing in uh, Bangladesh as far as Hindu minorities are concerned. And there are rising concerns of how the United States was involved in the regime change in Bangladesh and what it has led Bangladesh to become. I really don't have any sp specific intelligence on that. I know that that's something that people are saying. I don't know whether the United States had anything to do with the ouster of the previous uh, Bangladeshi government That is something that Mohammed Yunus himself said, Ray Locker. Uh, in fact, he called Bill Clinton the mastermind behind the planned ouster of Sheikh Hasina. Well, Bill Clinton has been president since 2001. I mean, obviously, he's f uh, familiar with Yunus. I know they have a history. Um, when it comes to microfinance and things like that, but I don't know much more about it. Um, I know that with the incoming Trump administration, if this is something that Narendra Modi feels strongly about, he'll get some traction um, with Trump when Trump becomes president, and that'll be highly be helpful to ISKCON. Hmm. Okay, um, Donald Trump, of course, has also spoken about uh, the kind of atrocities that are happening in Bangladesh against Hindu minorities. Professor Sarkar, is there any hope, you know, when this regime change happened in Bangladesh, did you even expect the kind of turn of events that you will see in Bangladesh? Was there always an underlying sentiment against the minority community in Bangladesh? It always each and every election, after the elections and regime has changed, it is happening, and not only for the first time, from the 1971. And then in a, during the, all the parties, Jatiya parties, Irshad, BNPs, and then even third time in Sheikh Hasina also. Each and every after the election, if anyone win, they also just, I think, attacked on Hindus because they are winner for this joy and enjoyment. 
And then if they lose, loser, loser party is also common and attacked on us because they are lost due to the minorities. There is a both actually win-win situation for them. If like a, it's a minority is tortured and then they left to India's, their land is available. So easily, tar easy target, short target all the time in the Hindus. And you see like Hindus are declining and that is the, Always is we discriminate. In the, we, our main discrimination is the religious Hindu communities. That is, we are Hindus. That is, that is the one. Another one is any time. Like if right now you see in this, this period of time, we are united, we raise our voice because the atrocities is going on. And within a song, that is, the people attacked on us. That is, we are Indian spy. And then we are that supporter on the Aum League. Yes, so few Hindus and so many, many Hindus, I'm, I would like to tell you, maybe supporter in the, like Sheikh Hasina, but we are not as a polity, like a, a poly, we are not doing politics and we are not leaders. Some people may be supporter in BNP, some people are supporter in the Aum League, but you see at any, at any cost, at any reasons, like they always attack on us, they capture our land, forcefully convert our mm. women, and that is happening for the long period of time. And still is going on. You see, you see, here is a Chima Prabhu, we are united. But it is only and now, yeah. Professor Who's Sarkar, that these now? things are coming out of Bangladesh. What was stopping, what was stopping, um, you know, the media from reporting these incidents earlier? These, of course, have now increased. There is chaos there in Bangladesh against the minorities. But like you mentioned, that this has been happening for a long time. What was stopping uh, the media from reporting all of this to the world? Yes, well, should like, uh, you see, our boys always is depressed. And that is not suppressed by the governments and others. Like, uh, so, like, world should, should know and then, like, uh, they just, I think, proper investigates, if anything wrong, we support. It's definitely, the, if anything is doing against the countries, again, illegal activities, then definitely they are under the custody or a punishment. But you see, without any reason, if like a Hindu just raise their voice and then telling about the atrocities and then intentionally they are doing, it is wrong, absolutely wrong. And then like uh, people should raise. I, I, I always telling one thing is the majority of people's Bangladesh is even with the Muslim peoples are very good, but only for a few people's chaos has started and we are affected. It must should, should stop. Hmm. And you see what it's, all, all it's also interesting, start. Professor Sarkar. Yeah, yeah. It's also interesting, Professor Sarkar, that you uh, mentioned the fact that you're called Indian spies and Indian stooges, uh, because today in the High Court of Bangladesh, also the government representative of the UNUS administration said that there are external forces who are trying to destabilize the country. Why would you blame external forces when you yourself can't control your domestic challenges, can't control your domestic situations, and can't find peace and harmony between the majority and the minority communities? Yes, you see, external forces definitely. You see, like, uh, that is, uh, although we are not to just, I think, no, she's behind always, but it's definitely external forces and internal forces is all together are just, I think, doing each and everything. And you see, like, uh, say, it's a that is the it's a problem for a, in the country. See, there's so many things is a under control. Is not a like a, out of control for them. And suddenly that is the just just shifted on us. That is we are the Indian spy. We are the Samuelers agent, and we are doing something is wrong. And that's why said the seditions case against us. But you see, we are we have no any relation with that. We just, I think, Hindus always do for the peaceful protections. They just do it. They are not doing any harmful for anything. But just for, mm. like, suddenly shifted. Even for, you see, case against Shinmoy Prabhu. It is one month before. But why right now they just, I think, arrest him? Definitely it's a external and internal. Mm. All are just forces involved. 
just for stop our voice. Hmm, hmm. Okay. Uh, Ray Lockup, you know, like we talked about Donald Trump, the incoming president of the United States, there are uh, increasing voices asking for him to take steps uh, and, you know, bring in peace and harmony in Bangladesh as far as the minorities are concerned. What is the hope uh, that you have when Donald Trump comes in? He's spoken about it in the past. Do you see these things changing? Do you see the UNIS administration uh, also sort of uh, perhaps getting changed or at least being, um, you know, uh, being convinced by the Trump administration to take control of the situation? Well, I think, uh, obviously, Eunice is going to have to take Trump into account. We're, I don't know what Trump is going to say. He's obviously been supportive of Hindus in Bangladesh. I don't think that's going to change. I think he will continue to be supportive. And I think if the Eunice administration wants to have good relations with the United States over the next four years, it's going to have to change the way it's been acting. Um, you know, he talked, Eunice talks about foreign interference. I mean, that's a dodge that people use in a variety of countries when they can't get control over their domestic issues. Um, obviously, some people in Bangladesh saw an advantage in, um, you know, abusing the rights of Hindus. Let's hope that that changes. Obviously, I think Trump is on the side of the angels in this issue. Um, and I, I must admit, I'm not familiar with all of the nuances of why this is happening. There's also a growing, um, you know, uh, voice and hope with Tulsi Gabbard, Ray Locker, uh, because she herself is somebody who who worships at ISKCON temples. She is a devotee at ISKCON. Uh, and now that she's director of intelligence, there is hope from her as well. Well, yeah, I mean... I know people think that, and she obviously is has an affinity for ISKCON. Um, I just don't know how good she's going to be as a director of national intelligence, if she's going to get confirmed at all. Um, I mean, that would be something that if I was a member of ISKCON, I would feel good about having her in that job. But I don't really know how much pressure she's going to be able to bring to bear if she gets confirmed. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll have to wait and watch uh, when that happens. Hopefully, there will be some sort of concrete action that will be taken. Professor Sarkar, uh, with the protests happening, there are, of course, hundreds and thousands of people who are taking to the streets of Bangladesh, protesting against the arrest uh, of Sri Chinmoy Das and, of course, the kind of uh, treatment that has been meted out to ISKCON and its devotees in Bangladesh. Uh, what would be the next course of action? Because the UNIS administration has said that the law will take its own course and that there are reasons for uh, the kind of charges that have been pressed against Sri Chinmoy Das. Yes, you see, like uh, what actually happened in the last year's studies, they say against, that is the peaceful protest, suddenly people has come and attacked. And that is one is a lawyer has been killed, has killed, you know, yes. and that is our law and administrator arrested six, none of the Hindus. But you see, that is they are telling for the different issues, whatever law and order is it, like published each and everything. But it's a, our protest was just peaceful all the time. And like what we feel when that is the people actually see that is, so many Hindus are gathered, united, and somehow what we guess, that is the stop our voice, they intentionally did, did it. So that if the Chinmoy Das has arrested, then it will be stopped. So that is the actually, uh, we feel, guess it is the main actually point, that is he has been arrested. Yes, we are not to stop. We just, I think, go, uh, like uh, going and then definitely raise our voice. Like we have to just establish our right. That is actually our uh, future, actually objectives. Yes, I am not to just, I think, leader, but you so, know, Professor they Sarkar, but, um, also, you know, yeah, can I also understand from you, Professor Sarkar, is there some sort of fear now within the Hindu community? You're mentioning that, uh, you know, the protests will continue, the voices will not be stifled. But, um, you know, after this arrest, the kind of incidents that are coming out of Bangladesh against the Hindu minorities, uh, what's the general sentiment among the Hindu community there? Is there fear? Is there anger? Is there, uh, you know, disappointment with the UNIS administration? 
Yes, they just uh, fear. One is, another is, what is going on? It's not good for all the Hindu communities. It's feel it's injustice for them. Another is, uh, I would like to say, majority and maximum Muslims are very good. They just support it. But it's uh, like uh, what we feel, and so many people actually feel, just to divert their like a failure. Because 100 is a three and four days already is have passed. But so many, you know, college, uh, so many college, actually student has protested and then attacked on one group to another group. So it's a, for divert that all the failures, maybe it's a towards to, against the Hindus, what actually people actually expected. Hmm. Ha, ha, you know, um, has there been any help that has been given to you at this point in time from neighbors, from friends, from family who are, um, you know, Bangladeshi Muslims who want to ensure that the Hindu minorities and other minorities in Bangladesh, not just the Hindus, have a protected environment in their country? Yes, uh, I told that is some um, majority of Muslims are very good. And that's why we always is a live together. But is a few, what I, I'd like to hmm. tell you that is the fanatics have like a, a, activities and fanatics as a rise too much. So that is the alarming. And a few people are just, I think, doing all the nuisance and they are, it's a, it is actually alarming for everyone, not only for Hindus, all the minorities, including in secular Muslims also. And yes, I would like to tell you, Muslims are very good, and that's why we live peacefully. And some, they are very, very helpful. Maximum people are very helpful to protect the minorities, and they even support this movement. But few people sure. are different. Okay. W one last question, Professor Sarkar. What is your hope with the Indian government at this moment? You see, that is, is in neighboring countries. I expect neighboring countries should always I'm not telling it's a democratic. Our is a, we are the sovereign, uh, sovereign countries, India is also. But I expect both countries is, a, you see, good relation is a very, very important. And then we depend on them. And these peaceful countries is very hmm. important for them as well. So we support, we, we actually expect yes. India should, like you see, for neighboring countries, is peaceful is good for them. As a big, big is a now is a world leaders is the fourth largest economics in the world. So it is both good for both the countries. If the anything is a happen and turmoil sure. or any sure. neighboring countries is not for them as well. And in the for our our actually we always depend on India. If they feel or they just stop export or other things, definitely we're gonna affect them. So it is good, like peaceful in the both yes. country. That is important for, for mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, I think that's what both sides would hope for. But these atrocities against Hindu minorities need to stop first. I'm going to have to wrap it up here. Ray Locker and Professor Sarkar, thank you very much to both of you gentlemen for joining us on Global Mirror and sharing your perspectives.